Hello, my name is Tachi. This is Joy Girl, and let's talk about color spreads. We all love color spreads. Well, most of us, anyways, because if you're an anime only fan, you might not know what a color spread is. Color spreads are a special type of cover pages. They're colored and typically double paged. And unlike cover stories, which we've discussed before, they aren't considered part of the canon story, but they arouse a lot of excitement in manga readers nonetheless, because they usually show the straw hats in some fun settings, although it has been used to feature other characters as well at times. But usually, they center around the straw hats in different situations where we get to see the crew just hanging out, which as you guys should know by now is some of my favorite moments in One Piece. And even though they're not canon, it does seem like Oda, who is well known for dropping foreshadowing details throughout the series, it seems he's even used this additional material to drop some hints for future plot developments. For example, prior to Ace's death in the series, which we didn't see until chapter 574, this groundbreaking moment may have actually been foreshadowed earlier in the color spread of chapter 520. Whilst at first glance, this spread seems like just an innocent drawing of the straw hats playing cards, but let's take a deeper look. Focusing on Luffy, we can see the rubber boy holding a card of Brook with his left hand and a hand of cards including a very distinct Ace of Spades in the other. Now given that Ace was the captain of the Spades Pirates prior to joining the Whitebeard Pirates and Brook is a character who has resurrected from death, it seems this could have been Oda hinting at Ace's death. And if the cards just seem to be too much of a stretch, there's also the fact that on Luffy's face, he has an extremely similar crying expression to what we saw after his brother's death. So needless to say, fans have also taken to studying color spreads for hints that may have been sprinkled in throughout the series, which is exactly what we're going to be doing in this video because we're going to be looking at all the color spreads which may have foreshadowed our current Wano arc throughout the series. But in saying that, I do also want to preface this discussion to point out that I don't necessarily think that all of these details in the color spreads are all instances of intentional foreshadowing which Oda planned out years in advance. Rather, it may be just the case where Oda realized later on that the drawings that he made ended up fitting well into his story and so utilized it accordingly. Sort of like a chicken or the egg situation. Did Oda plant a detail in the color spread first for it to be revealed later on? Or did Oda draw something in a color spread which he later found could fit into the story? But regardless of the answer, it certainly is fun to go back and see just how many details ended up playing into the actual story because whether it's a case of intentional foreshadowing or not, I think we have to give credit to the fact that Oda has crafted such a well-rounded and coherent series by incorporating incorporating even details that he included in color spreads into his series years later. Which is the point of this video because I went through all the color spreads we've seen throughout the series and picked out every color spread which I believe we could make a connection to Wano even from One Piece's pre-time skip days. But I warn you that this video might get a little ridiculous so if overanalyzing every detail on every page is not your type of thing then go check out some of my other videos because this discussion is for our overthinkers. And our first example is from chapter 70 which was released in 1999 almost two full decades before we even set foot in Wano. This is the first color spread I found to be particularly Wano-esque. It features the original East Blue 5 dressed up in the clothing of traditional samurais from the period of feudal Japan and what's even more is that perched in the O of One Piece we have a samurai Jolly Roger with a kabuki theatrical design and double cross swords as its crossbones which bears a striking resemblance to Kinemon as a swordsman who sports a top knot and is capable capable of wielding two swords, a character who plays a major role in Wano, an arc which has been heavily influenced by Kabuki theatre. But because this colour spread was released almost at the very beginning of the Arlong Park arc, it's difficult to say that Oda had planned for Kinemon's character so early on, especially when we know he originally only planned for the story to finish in five years time. And whilst I do think that Oda may have always planned to explore some aspects of his home country's culture, such as the samurais in some way in the series, I don't think he ever imagined it would be to the level of detail and breadth that we have in our current Wano arc. But as we now know, Oda is a mangaka who thoroughly enjoys taking inspiration from history and culture. It's great to see that even if he didn't intend for this color spread to be a foreshadowing detail, he had the joy to be able to express his interest for his country's samurai past by way of a color spread. And then when the opportunity arose for him to fully explore this culture decades later, he was able to do so and even incorporate drawings he made in the past. And the next example is from chapter 100. And I have to admit, this requires quite some mental gymnastics and I would be inclined to just skip over it because it is quite a bit of a stretch but this is one of my favorite color spreads as we got an updated version of it recently and there's a detail in here that we could read into a little deeper so I just figured what the hell let's add it in and before we continue I'm going to ask anime only fans to skip ahead to the time shown on the screen to avoid any manga only spoilers
spoilers. But for everyone else, this celebratory color spread for the series' 100th chapter includes one minor detail, which in retrospect could have been a foreshadowing hint. The haunt pink fish which Sanji is holding is, on one hand, just a fun detail. But with what we know now about Kaido having the fish devil fruit and yet transforms into a dragon, and Oda's interesting choice of a peach colored fish in this color spread, I can't help but make a connection to Momonosuke's artificial devil fruit, which was created from Kaido's lineage factor. And whilst it's hard to say that Oda was hinting at Momonosuke's character all the way from chapter 100, it's harder to dispute Oda's crafty ability to work all of these layers of intrigue in, which certainly makes people wonder whether all of this is really connected. But moving on, chapter 107's color spread has a theme, funky. The word funky in One Piece has now become synonymous with a certain character in the series, and in no way am I suggesting that Oda has been dropping hints about the appearance of Queen this early on, but we can certainly appreciate that Oda is the same mangaka who has kept his fun, funky vision alive in his series. But if we're talking about continuity, the Straw Hats adventuring the skies is a common theme in One Piece color spreads, which is also what we have in chapter 128. But common feature aside, we have the crew on top of pterodactyls in this color spread, which could be connected to Wano where most of Kaido's top officers have dinosaur devil fruits, and even this may be a pretty loose connection, which I wouldn't bring up if it wasn't for the inscription on the color spread which reads, stand up if you want to fight. Because this is a message that's very relevant to the Wano arc, with Luffy more or less using these words on multiple occasions to bolster Momonosuke and the Wano citizens whom by that point had lost their will to fight, with Luffy telling them to stand up for themselves against Kaido. Not to mention the serpent drawing on Sanji's jacket, which perhaps hints of a future villain. Skipping ahead to the color spread for chapter 269, which is the next time we see the Straw Hats in traditional Japanese attire in a very Japanese setting. And seeing Luffy practicing the intricate art of calligraphy isn't the only interesting thing from this color spread, because a detail I have to point out are the two pea fowls in the background, which has a clear link to a certain Kazuki family member with clear connections to pea fowls. And then in chapter 287, this really is a situation where I wonder how far I should read into things because on the surface, this isn't a color spread which I would point out if it wasn't for the fact that we have many elements we've seen at Wano present in this color spread, like the dragon statue, Sanji's noodle stand, boars, red lantern, and even the idea of death marks and a boiling pot. The color spread for chapter 310 is one that most of you are probably now familiar with, unless you're an anime only fed, in which case I'll again have to ask you to skip ahead. For everyone else, ever since the development of Momo being aged up by Shinobu's devil fruit, fans have been pointing out this color spread which was released over 15 years ago during the Long Ring Longland arc. A peach colored adult dragon in the background along some of our straw hats in traditional Japanese clothing, with Luffy's even having a design very similar to the Kazuki crest. And Oda inscribes this spread with Shibaraku, a reference to a well-known kabuki play. The Shibaraku play is based on Kamakura Gongoro Kagemasa, a figure well known for his bravery during the Gosunan War, where he continued to fight even after losing an eye. And from the new developments that we've seen about Zoro and the connections made to Ryuma, another famed swordsman who only had one eye, this specific reference to this play does seem like Oda has had this play in mind for quite some time and it later went to serve some inspiration for his story. Now let's look at chapter 352 where in the color spread we see the Straw Hats enjoying a race on top of roosters apart from Zoro who seems to be dealing with a little chick instead. This is all occurring against the backdrop of the rising sun which was the traditional flag or banner for Japan in the past and this spread is titled There's an Open Road. Now we could make connections between this color spread to the Wano arc through the Japanese symbol of the rising sun, we could tie it to the message of an open road, considering the goal of the arc is to open Wano's borders, or we could just connect it to a certain fan favorite smile devil fruit user. Chapter 373 is the next time we see the straw hats in traditional Japanese attire, and this color spread makes another homage to the Kabuki theater by referencing Hanamichi, which is the extension of a stage which connects to the audience's area. So by this point, you see some recurring themes, traditional Japanese clothing and Kabuki theater. These are obviously images Oda has consistently had on his mind for a long time, which in part helps us understand why Wano is the mega art 
arc that it is. Next, chapter 449. Although the original Straw Hat trio aren't wearing traditional Japanese outfits, we do get the continuation of different themes, a red-hued dragon and Sakura petals. And then we get a continuation of many themes in the color spread for chapter 526, which may perhaps be my favorite on this list. In a traditional Yakuza tattoo style drawing, we have the trio yet again, and this time they are in traditional Japanese clothing and there is a dragon present. What's really interesting is that the color spread also features a tiger, which is an homage to the Seiryu vs Byako legend of the dragon vs tiger. And well, with how much Oda draws from traditional legends, you can't blame so many people for expecting to see a tiger show up in the Wano arc. And in which case, if that does indeed happen, we'll be able to revisit this color spread again and marvel at it all over again. And in the next example, this is a case where we have other non-straw hat characters featured in a color spread, but the reoccurrence of the Japanese attire really does give you a feel for Oda's interest in the design and seemingly that he has always wanted to incorporate traditional Japanese culture in his story in some way. And this is just a bit of wishful thinking, but seeing all of these characters make their way to Wano just as Jinbei did is unlikely to happen, but something that I would love to see. Now making our way to the post time skip era, in the chapter 710 color spread, we see the straw hats in a kung fu theme, which is traditionally a Chinese martial arts style, not Japanese. But what is interesting though, is that we see another appearance of a dragon, which on its own may not seem very suggestive of any relation to Wano. But if you look at Usopp, his white beard and green hat is extremely similar to his Uso Hachi disguise. Now that by this point in the story, where chapter 710 was in the Dressrosa arc, where the Wano arc had already been established as a future development for the series, it does really cause you to think, did Oda want to tease us of an upcoming character design? Or did he just fall in love with the Usopp he drew in this color spread? From this point forth, the details in the color spreads do seem more as if they were intended as foreshadowing hints, which makes sense because by this point in the series, we were well into the Yonko saga. And in chapter 802, the color spread features members of the Straw Hats eating dangos with Oda inscribing, thou shouldst eat Eat to live not live to eat. And this really has very clear connections to Wano, what with Tama and her devil fruit abilities of producing Dango, and the quote from Socrates, which really captures what Luffy is trying to achieve for the citizens of Wano, to make Wano a place where everyone can live freely in a country unbound by hunger. The color spread for chapter 833 was used as a promotional cover for the film Gold, but Oda used this opportunity to still feature the straw hats wearing kimonos whilst eating watermelon and watching fireworks. And I can't help but think that this seems like a scene that would be fitting for the end of the Wano arc, where the Straw Hats and the rest of Wano enjoy the fire festival in honor of everyone who's passed for the country's sake. As for chapter 843, which showed the Straw Hats in front of a pagoda, it really does seem like a scene straight out of Wano. Though admittedly, this probably has more to do with the fact that Oda was paying homage to his hometown, Kumamoto City, which suffered an earthquake around the time of this chapter release. But now, this is where things get really foreshadowy. And for those of you who've been following the channel for quite a while now, you should be familiar with these color spreads, but let's go through these examples again. Because some of the color spreads that we got since we started the Wano arc strongly seem like they are foreshadowing details for future developments in the arc. Chapter 929, for example, in which the straw hats are all dressed like ninjas and Zoro is holding a scythe. And chapter 929 was only chapters before he would actually go on to use a scythe in battle against fellow supernova member Killer or Kamazo as he was known back then. And then for the color spread of that chapter where we actually see Zoro use the scythe, we get another detail where Zoro is studying a map, which should really set you off because Zoro and maps just seem very antithetical. But in this case, on the map that Zoro is reading, the kanji characters for Enma can be seen. Chapters before we even knew about the famed sword, Oda had hinted at its introduction through the color spread. Now that's it for color spreads which pointed to Wano even before the arc began, or for some spreads which pointed to further developments once we got into the Wano arc. And these are just examples of things that have played out in the story so far. By the end of the Wano arc, we may find that there are even many more examples of color spreads which hinted at future Wano developments. For example, the color spread for chapter 992 where Zoro is eating noodles out of a bowl with a blue dragon on it, which seems quite ominous, like a representation of Zoro eating out of Kaido's hollow bones, or even more ominous in chapter 1009, where despite everyone's smiles, we may find that the appearance of Jizo statues in this color spread were hinting at some deaths we may see by the end of the arc. Let me know what you think or whether there are any other color spreads which you think were hinting at Wano developments by leaving a comment below. Don't forget to like and share the video and please do subscribe for more One Piece discussions. You can also join our Joyfully Discord server for 
for more One Piece fun or even become a patron member for more powers and roles within that server. Thank you to our patrons who help support the channel. This is Joy Girl and I'll see you again soon.